Hi, welcome to the ECAM channel. This is John. Today I will talk about Columbic efficiency, number of charge transfer, and rate capability. This tutorial is based on the capacity calculation that we went through in the second tutorial in this series. This content is more relevant to supercapacitive or battery materials, which involve some redox reactions during charge storage. Columbic efficiency is a powerful parameter to identify parasitic reactions that contribute to the current in addition to the charge storage event. It is the ratio of the charge being stored or withdrawn to the reverse process. In the experiment settings where we have excess electrolytes, a Columbic efficiency less than 100% can still be sustainable. However, in a lithium-ion battery cell where the supply of lithium-ion is limited, if the parasitic reaction consumes lithium, a columbic efficiency less than 100% can strongly limit the cycle life. Take columbic efficiency of 99.9 .9 and 99.86% for example. On the surface, they are both very close to 100% and are only 0.04% apart from each other. However, when you cycle them 500 times, 99.9% .9 columbic efficiency results in a capacity retention of 60% and 99.86% columbic efficiency gives only 50% capacity at the end of 500 cycles. This shows how a small difference in columbic efficiency can make a big difference in the long run. The calculation of columbic efficiency of a single electrode depends on the process that we are looking at. Uh, for graphite, we need to integrate or reduce it first, and then to deintegrate or oxidize it. In this case, we take the anodic capacity and divide it by the cathodic capacity. For lithium cobalt oxide, we need to first deintegrate lithium or oxidize it, and then to integrate lithium or reduce it in the reverse cycle. In this case, we will use the ratio of cathodic capacity to anodic capacity. The number of charge transfer per formula unit is calculated based on Faraday's law of electrolysis. In an ion inversion or conversion reactions, it tells us how many electrolyte cations are participating in the reaction and the extent of redox in the electrolyte material. For example, the reversible capacity of lithium cobalt oxide is 140 mA per gram. It corresponds to 0.5 lithium per formula unit and half of the cobalt going through a 4 plus to 3 plus reduction. In graphite and the silicon, their theoretical capacities are 372 and 3590 mAh per gram, respectively. They are calculated based on the assumptions that 1 lithium occupies a hexagon of carbon and 15 lithium ions react with 4 silicon atoms. The equation for Faraday's law of electrolysis is presented here. You can use the examples above to practice this calculation. Finally, read capability analysis can give you a sense of appropriate time regime for the charge discharge of material under study. In the example here, I plotted the capacity retention as a function of sweep rate for molybdenum pentaoxide thin film cycled in a 1 molar lithium perchlorate in propylene carbonate. If I want to achieve 80% of the maximum capacity for this material, I'll have to use a sweep rate of less than 50 mV per second or charge discharge time of less than 40 seconds. We maintain this channel only on the weekends. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. The videos in our eCam channel are only for educational purposes and knowledge sharing. Please subscribe, share, and like our videos to support our channel. Thank you for watching the video today. See you next time.